it doesn't show up on video. But there's the northern lights outside my backyard. It doesn't quite know what to focus on. So the video camera couldn't quite pick it up, but I used my Canon G7X on some special night settings, and I managed to get these pictures of the northern lights in my backyard. That's literally my backyard. I'm sure you recognize it from the vlogs. It's just incredible. Uh, and, it, and it wasn't even that that good. I've seen it much better before. But yeah, this is my backyard. I figured I wanted to share this with you. It was about 2 a.m. this morning. It was beautiful. All right, Diesel, you ready to go to Alberta? Ready to go on a trip? Oh boy, Alberta is your favorite place with lots of cows. Excited? So the birthday weekend is over. Back to work. We're headed to Sundra, Alberta. Should be fun. It's just a little bit north of Calgary. What's 16 hours of driving from here? I should be there a little after this time tomorrow. It's about 11 o'clock here this morning. I should be there about 1 o'clock to noon to 1 o'clock mountain time, their time. Right on schedule. Back in a familiar environment. On our way to Alberta. Sunny, sunny Alberta. Wild Rose, Alberta. Beautiful Alberta. The heart of the West. Then again, everybody claims to be the heart of the West. Well, no, no. Winnipeg claims to be the heart of the continent, which is true. It's, it's the centermost city in North America, apparently. Our claim to fame. Calgary is has the claim to heart of the new west, I believe, western Canada, which is pretty much true. That's where sort of everything runs through in Calgary and Edmonton. So it should take us, according to Mandy here, it should take us only 24 hours to get there, 24, 25. I think it'll take a little longer than that. Then again, I know that I got to stop for breaks and whatnot. Just around on the west side, southwest side of Winnipeg right now on the perimeter. I can drive 13 hours today, legally. I've got about, like I said before, 14 to 15 hours worth of driving. So I should be able to make it almost all the way there if I if I take up my whole day. I would like to drive as far as I can today, then that uh, allows me to drive further tomorrow, right? Well, drive as far as I can until midnight. Hours of service in Canada say I can drive 13 hours a day but it has to be between midnight to midnight on your home terminal time, time schedule, so central time. From midnight to midnight central time, I can drive 13 hours. But let's say I drive today uh, 10 hours, and then the other two or three hours I drive after midnight, but it's still on this clock today, right? And then I stop for my break. Those two hours come out of my 13 hours from tomorrow. Does that make sense? So, only 13 hours a day. Midnight to midnight. There's a train here. What in the world? I've never seen a train here before. Oh, it's an oil tanker. Got some seed cars there. Oh, okay. You know, this is the Trans-Canada Highway, our federal highway. Uh, sort of like uh, what you might call an interstate in the United States. It's the only one we have at this part of the country. This is the only highway, main highway, federal highway, through the country from coast to coast. I know most of you know this, but just I just wanted to point that out and then point out the fact that there are train tracks on that said road, the one road, and there's no overpass, underpass. All we had to do is build one, just to keep the economy moving steadily. Nope, this is Winnipeg. And it's not even complaining, like, I don't mind waiting for the train, whatever. It's only gonna be a few minutes here, five, 10 minutes. It depends if they stop, because if he's dropping off the oil cars here at this uh, oil depot, uh, then it, he might have to go back and forth a couple times, block highway, the highway for a little while, I don't know. But my, my point is that there's only one main artery through the country at, at this point in the country. Only one. I really, really think we could have an overpass here by now. I really think we could just go under the tracks already. You know, I've seen it done before. Edmonton. Take a look at Edmonton. They're all about the overpasses right now. Overpasses for the overpasses. Don't want to come off as uh, like I'm complaining. I'm just saying, it's just one road. We only got one. 
It's not like we got to build a network of tunnels and overpasses and bridges. No, no, it's just one. Just one. Behold, an overpass. So it is possible for us to do it here in Winnipeg. Watch the ease of crossing the tra train tracks as the train is on the tracks crossing the opposite direction. Watch, watch. Magical. You see the train down there? I don't even have to slow down for it. I can keep passing this slow poke. Except that it keeps speeding up. Look at that. Oh, man. So we can do it, Winnipeg. We can do it. We've done it before. There's your evidence. Let's build a whole more bunch of those. You know what I'm saying? No more traffic lights. No more train tracks. We only got one road. Let's do it. Eli, Manitoba. About 20 minutes or so west of Winnipeg. And it is the mandatory first stop of all road trips. They have a Tim Hortons here. It's a little more convenient to get in and out of here than in Oak Bluff, so I always stop here now. Though now that I told all you that, you're all going to pile in here and there won't be any room for me. I do that to myself every time. But so far, it's worked out great. It's just off here to the left. I'm just going to turn around and come in beside Mr. Kindersley over here. Actually, you know what? Well, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm gonna park beside Mr. Turn Kinder's right on one. Everything's starting to dry up a little bit. It gets so muddy here in spring every year. Uh, all over the whole country. You know, Canada in the springtime. It's just a mud hole. A nice mud hole, but a mud hole. Gonna park in such a way that people can still get by me and my trailer there. All right, Timmy Hose. Oh, what are you beeping at me for? Did I leave you in gear? I'm so sorry, You're so cranky. I left her all by herself all weekend again. I didn't even take her to my birthday party. So, she's a little mad at me. Whatever, she'll get over it. Right? Hey, Diesel. You want a Timbit? I just wanted to give a shout out to Scott Durand. You sent me a really nice letter here. Very well written, too. Very well written. You must be like top of the class in English class. I believe you said you were in grade 11, right? Man, you must be the honor roll student. <laughs> uh, thank you for all the compliments in the letter that you sent me. Really appreciate it. You're from London, Ontario. Uh, he went through in proper essay format uh, the reasons why he loves my videos and the way uh, they inspire him. And why he's a fan of what I do on YouTube. So I'll read the last paragraph here. In conclusion, I'm one of your biggest fans because I love what you do. Your wide range of topics daily. From history to driving and hater control. And all in all, thank you for what you do. Because you keep giving us a snippet of what you do daily. Sincerely, Scott Durand. So thank you very much for that letter. I love receiving stuff like that. And again, very well written. I'm very impressed. Just passed by Balgoni Baloney. You know what that means. There's Flying J right around the corner here. And you know what that means. It's coffee time. It's coffee time. Coffee time. Pull on in here. How do I get in there? Wait a second. This used to be the exit here. Oh, wait. No, this is going to be the exit. They're building a bypass around Regina here with a whole bunch of, you know, those glorious things we call overpasses. Saskatchewan's got it. They probably saw what Alberta was doing and like, hey, that's a good idea. I think we'll do it too. Maybe eventually it'll pass on to Manitoba. But anyways, while they're busy here building overpasses, it's kind of chaos. It's a chaotic mess. And this is right around Pilot Flying J, so there's a lot of truck traffic here as well, which doesn't help things. They used to have lights at this intersection here, but they took those down for some reason. Usually I complain about lights, but when it's at a... Uh, a truck stop like this with a lot of truck traffic. I might complain about it, but I understand why it's there, right? I acknowledge the fact that, yeah, this makes things safer. Even though I'm going to complain about it. 
Now they took them away. Now it's like really hard to get across the road during rush hour. But whatever. Whatever. Right. At least they're building overpasses. You just can't win with me. I will find something to criticize. <laughs> oh, it's a big bump. Oh, big bump. Big bump. Uh, I think I turn left here. How do I get in here? Of course, when I want to make a left turn, that's when the parade has to come through, right? Quick, he's turning. Everybody, everybody, get in his way. Come on now, everybody. Oh, wow. Look at those rain clouds over there. That's cool. So I bet you this whole area is going to be really nice once it's all done. Tell you what. Flying J Shell. Flying J and Shell are uh, partnered here in Canada. It's all sort of the same thing up on this side of the border. And gas is cheaper in Saskatchewan than it is in Manitoba. Well, I know these prices mean nothing to you guys in the States because you don't do liters, but it's 97.9 .9 per liter here for gasoline. In Manitoba, it was a dollar 2.9. I don't get what the point nine is. Like, what is point nine of a cent? We don't even manufacture pennies anymore it wasn't worth a penny to make a penny. So now we got point nines of pennies rolling around. Like, never got that. But I, I, I get their uh, marketing scheme, right? It's a marketing scheme. It makes it look like it's a dollar two. Technically, it's a dollar three. You see, you learn things every day watching Trucker Josh. Don't let them trick you. DEF, all lanes, okay. This guy is in the pumps backwards, I'm assuming because his DEF tank is on his passenger side. Yep, there it is. Now, who puts these trucks together and puts the DEF tank on the passenger side? Where on this earth do you find a DEF pump on the passenger side? So why put the tank on the passenger side? You know what I mean? You guys who have to deal with that all the time must be so frustrated. Now that's exactly what I want to do. Exactly. I want to have my bike behind the cab like that. That is awesome. That's been my plan all along. That's why I bought my motorcycle. And mine's a lot narrower and lighter than that one. So I'm glad to see other people are making it work. You can see the ramp at the bottom there. That's exactly how I was going to make mine. So cool. Now I'm even more excited to get my own truck one day. I don't know if I'm going to buy my own truck again. Uh, but if I do, that's what I'm going to do with it. Right there. Alberta, we're gonna pull into the Petro Pass here and call it a night. Drove about ten and a half hours today. I'd say that's quite the day. Camera's about to die. That means definitely time to stop. And do the rest tomorrow. I've never actually spent the night here yet. This is a newer truck stop in Redcliffe it's on the west side of Medicine Hat. See if we can find ourselves a parking spot. It looks a little full by the looks of it. People parked all over the place. Maybe they're just lazy and didn't want to actually back into a spot. That's what I'm hoping for. Hopefully I can find a spot here for myself. Well, shoot. No room at the inn for us. I thought for sure there'd be room here. I guess we'll go check across the road at the Esso. Huh. Busy place. 